1853, the land was purchased. And uh, so our parish then, as we know it now, uh, begins. Though it wasn't called St. Mary's in the beginning, um, but the Catholic presence here in downtown you know, truly begins. Well, there was an original structure that was built in the side of the present church. Uh, that was blown out into the street by a hurricane. And uh, so we, they built another structure, now we you know a St. Clair Chapel. And St. Clair was finished in 1880 and served well, but then even by the end of uh, the 1900s, the end of the 1800s, they knew that it was too crowded, especially during the winter. The winter colony people uh, would bring their servants, most of them were Catholic. And, and so people were already standing outside of St. Clair's. Uh, in 1905, they had built the present church, which served us well. Uh, they wanted a church that would be able to be huge and seat lots of people, which it did, and it served us well for 100 years. Father LeBlanc, back in, I believe it was about 2003 or 2004, uh, sponsored a long-range planning committee. And uh, just, you know, where's the church today? Where's it going? How are we going to get there? And uh, the very, you know, number one on that list was a new church. So, so there was a large influx of retirees, most especially from the Northeast, who were primarily Catholic. And other engineers who moved here for other reasons were also Catholic. And with that influx of Catholics, they needed a bigger church. Uh, on the idea of St. Mary's had needed to expand for some time. Aiken grew, even before the influx of retirees, Aiken was growing, and um, they had to add multiple masses, more and more masses. Uh, it got to a point where it was too many masses for the priests. And so we, um, at some point, began having some, about 10 years ago, I think, began having some things, maybe 12 years ago now, some masses at St. Angela. Uh, then about six years ago, most all of them went to St. Angela Hall. Adding to the existing St. Mary's was, was driven as much by the, how many seats do you want to include? Uh, we updated the population projections a few years ago, saw that maybe we didn't need quite as, quite as large a church which created some opportunities for us and allowed us to build this, this uh, little, little smaller church over on this other property. We and looked at all of, we wanted to look again at all of our options. Um, there seemed to be uh, some desire to reevaluate. Now that time had passed, you know, where we were going and what we were doing. And uh, I you know, put the thought out and talked to a lot of people. I mean, I didn't just come up with it. <laughs> put the thought out, you know, what about if we um, looked at uh, the property that we currently own and uh, re preserved the historic church, uh, which could be used and we still plan to be used every day um, for uh, daily mass, uh, smaller masses like weddings and funerals, which you would want a smaller space rather than putting them all in a huge uh, place where you kind of get lost. They had done some studies beforehand, uh, uh, so it was only 2008 when they began the capital campaign, uh, but before that they had been working uh, on the idea of St. Mary's had needed to expand for some time. Well, Father gave me a general vision. He said he wanted it to be, uh, you know, clearly Roman Catholic. He wanted it to fit into the uh, architectural heritage of Aiken, because it's going to be a very important, um, the most important building in Aiken. So you wanted to make sense with Aiken and, and its history. We, what we call groundbreaking in the secular world, really um, what we will be doing is a rite of blessing of a construction site. So uh, the ground could already have been broken. What we bless actually is the construction site, um, especially after it begins. And so uh, what we uh, erect, we'll erect a cross, a wooden cross where the altar will be in the new church. The layout of the walls of the building are, are marked and the bishop then um, goes and, and blesses the ground where the, where the foundations will be or are being laid. And, um, so it's, it's set aside. The idea of blessing in general is to set something aside uh, for the, the work of God. A new Anytime a new church is being built, uh, that is a major celebration for the whole uh, church, that is the body of Christ, and so especially for the local diocese. 
Uh, so we're not really, since just building for Aiken, it's never just about the people of St. Mary's because we belong to a much larger you know, family. And so this is a family, it becomes a family celebration. So therefore the head of our family, the, uh, uh, the bishop then uh, has a special connection to the liturgy itself. So he begins it by blessing, uh, or if he can't make it a delegation, he would delegate that, but it would be somebody he delegated. Um, and then he'll be here again to consecrate and for a dedication um, liturgy. Uh, it's called cruciform, but has the form of a cross. Uh, and so uh, with Christ at the head, as St. Paul teaches us in his, in his wonderful theology of the Catholic Church and the mystical body of Christ, Christ is the head of the church and we are the constituent parts of the church, all of us. And architects really ought to, I do, take that as instruction to design of good churches. So there is a head, there is a center, that's where the tabernacle is, uh, that's where the altar is. And then uh, from there, everything else is arrayed and radiates from the altar so that everyone can see, but everyone else is also organized about, the, about Christ. Some, some projects, uh, you know, we, we struggle with a little bit. Uh, this one, uh, I think, truly, I have to give the credit to the, to the Holy Spirit. It just flew off the, off the drawing boards. It just really came together very, very, very quickly. And uh, we design really from the inside out when we design churches. Most architecture, most architects design buildings from the outside because that's what everyone's going to see. And they design that first and then, they, and then they try to figure out what the inside should be. But my philosophy is very different and it turns that model inside out and starts with the theology of the church, with Christ. And so we begin the design of our churches at the altar in the sanctuary and we build out from the inside. And only once we're happy with the inside do we start to even begin to be worried about what it's going to look like on the outside. Great if historic events do not happen in a vacuum, and the parish of St. Mary's has been preparing for this for a long time, longer before me. Um, I think it's very exciting. Um, it's been a just a great celebration for everybody. And I like the idea that it shows prosperity in the church, bigger parish, more room, bigger facility, and yet the two other churches, the working churches, are still active. We will be doing uh, funerals, weddings, children's mass, daily mass. But we'll have the nice, big, big uh, church for uh, week weekend worship. Right, but it is, it's truly a blessing for the parish. Uh, so many people have looked forward to this day and with hope and anticipation. And so now it's the, kind of the first step where they get to see that their hopes and the, and the sacrifices that they've made are beginning to bear fruit. So. I think it's very cool to see. Um, like I said, I've grown up here and so have seen it since the idea was first brought forward by Father LeBlanc and it's very nice to be here today and to see the church actually being brought to life. Very excited and I'm so blessed and I feel so honored that I get to raise my family um, in the new church um, and I've, you know, congratulations to St. Mary's for celebrating their 160 year anniversary. Um, but absolutely, we are thrilled and so excited for the new church to be built. And um, we're 2000, Christmas 2014 can't come soon enough. I think it's great. You know, when you look at as far as the history of the church for us to start in 1853, um, where we keep growing, but we, even as we grow, you know, we just keep expanding as far as the church to accommodate all the parishioners that are here. So now having a new church where we can all fit in the church itself instead of the auditorium, I think is great. Well, I think I'm going to like it because it's going to be bigger than that me and that means that they're probably going to be more ultra service seats so I could serve more often. And so we can't wait for the new church to get, to get built and we'll be really ha happy once it gets built.
we've been working on this particular project now for 18 months. It took 18 months to get to this point, and 18 months from now, it'll be done. We'll have Christmas of 2014 in the new parish. This is a great, this is a great milestone. It's a great day.